this master is offered for perfect healing for Mrs. Pinky and her children from coronavirus infection offered by Capitanio Convent. Thanksgiving Mass to the Sacred Heart of Jesus on the birthday memory of on the birthday of Mrs. Michael offered by family members for the soul of Joseph Lawrence on his birthday memory offered by Bruce Lawrence and family members Thanksgiving Mass to the Holy Trinity and uh, Our Lady of Sorrows for all the blessings received offered by John Alex and family members for the speedy recovery of Gladwin Joseph offered by Divya Joseph and family members Thanksgiving Mass to Sacred Heart of Jesus on the birthday of Miss Patricia Matthew Director of St. Michael School offered by Ruby and family members and also for deliverance from all evil harassment and from cruelty and pain from every attacks offered by Benis Holt and family members. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace and joy of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your My dear friends, today we celebrate the memory of Our Lady of Sorrows. When Jesus, her son, went through that rejection, she was part of that rejection. When Jesus went through the pain of the cross and the Calvary, she was part of that pain and sorrow. She was under the cross, knowing that it is for me to look after this great death of Christ, her son. Look after is because she looked after his birth. And therefore, after his death, it is she who has to put back what was given to her in the sepulchre. And therefore, she has completed her mission of pain. But look at the glorious moment of Mary. And she was taken into heaven, body and soul. This is the reward for her to bring forth Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, in that stable that was painful. To put back Jesus in the sepulchre, that was painful. All through her journey along with Jesus Christ was a sorrowful journey. But look at her, how she has maintained her entire posture that she is ready to go through this. Therefore, you should look at the beautiful gift of her perseverance, patience and forbearance. Today you and I also have to go through certain pain and sorrow and suffering and you know some of us look like mother of sorrows. Isn't it? We all carry so much of burden. Some people carry burdens as though it is seen upon their head. Some people carry their burden as though they are carrying it behind their back. Some people carry it inside their heart. Some people carry it in their hands. You know, and here we have to carry our burden, our pain, our sorrows. But don't become like a sorrowful person with a long face. And that is why one of my professor would say, come out to the class and say, you de profundus fellows, you know, de profundus face. I'm sure that de profundus face was not with our blessed mother, even though she went through all this pain. Let us experience Jesus. You know, when we tell Jesus, we feel happy. When we think about his crucifixion, we feel sad. But let us always know Jesus and place all our sorrows into his hands asking him the courage and strength to go through every pain and sorrow. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, to my fall, to my fall, to my most grievous fall. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. He learned obedience and became the source of eternal salvation. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was his son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Yes, Lord. A response, save me, O Lord, in your love. Save me, o Lord, in your love. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Hear me and speedily rescue me. Save me, Lord, in your love. Be a rock of refuge for me, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Save me, Lord, in your love. Release me from the snakes they have hidden. For you are my refuge, Lord. 
Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. As for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you, that you show to those who trust you in the sight of men. Acclamation. Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to, his, to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her to his own home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. One of those beautiful gifts that God gives us is happiness. We all love happiness. If we love happiness then what about the sadness and the pain and the suffering? We don't want. We want only happiness. We want to be always on the happy path, happy side, happy moments. But when there is sorrow and pain, there is that hatred dwelling in us and therefore we know that everyone has pain and sorrow. My sorrow may not be your kind of a sorrow. Your kind of a sorrow may not be my kind of a sorrow. And maybe sorrow is not compared to anyone's other sorrows. But when we look at maybe seven sorrows that the Catholic Church acknowledges is to show that she as a mother, amongst all women, blessed, highly favored, now goes through this pain. Right at the beginning you find Simeon saying, a sword will pierce your heart. What is that sword? The sword is for sure for a gift that God has brought into this world. That is the sword that can bring understanding. So, the sword that pierces her heart, now we know the word of God is like a double-edged sword. And we know Mary pondering on the word. And every sorrow that she went through is like a sword piercing her heart. And Simeon was quite sure 
that every word that she would experience would be piercing her heart. Every word that we speak also pierce each other's heart. Well, if it is good word, wonderful. If it is a bad word or bad thing or speak bad about others, how much of hurt do you feel? How much of hurt others feel? Therefore, the word that you pro pronounce hurts people. When you speak bad about me, maybe behind my back, May you speak, maybe you speak bad about others behind their back. That is a word that pierces their heart. It's like a sword. And therefore we should know that we have to give each other that love, not that pain and sword. The second aspect that we see is how Mary, and Joseph and Jesus traveled traveled to Egypt and came back to Nazareth. Maybe 300 miles. A terrible journey. But I'm sure that journey would have been really wonderful. Joseph and Mary going on a donkey's back. And if you have been to the Holy Land, you know how the road was from Bethlehem to Egypt dry land, no greenery anywhere, there's no water anywhere and how they must have traveled that 300 miles and coming back again. We all travel, we travel several times and whenever we travel we receive a lot of experience. So traveling is an experience, we increase our experience. Mary also increased her experience. Even though she was going through that pain of the travel, but she learned a lot. Traveling around the world is also a great experience for us. We experience quite a lot. You'll meet people, you'll meet things, you'll meet accidents, you'll meet this, you'll meet that, but traveling is an experience. Mary went through that experience for she knew that it is this is what God has given her. The third aspect that we see is Mary missing Jesus from her own company. She lost him at the age of 12. That was in the temple. And for sure it was a moment of distress. Again, worry. What happened? You know, if you lose a child in US, they will put the mother in a rehab and take the child and keep the child in a home so that the mother learns to look after the child. But here Mary lost Jesus. But Mary went looking out. Looking out is to find. And when she found all that she said, why did you do this? And Jesus said, do you not know I am busy with my father's business? And Mary must have laughed and said, your father's business is carpentry not sitting in the temple, not sitting in the synagogue. But Mary knew that it was God's will. And when she was walking along with Jesus on the Calvary, that sorrow, the first sorrow is that she was walking along with Jesus in the Calvary. As long as for 30 years, she was doing everything for Jesus. I will do it for you. And Jesus must have sat down and did made Mary do everything. But on the Calvary, Mary must have told Jesus, can I, can I do that? Can I lift that cross for you? Can I wipe your face? Can I do this? So she must have had so much of uh, desire to do. Can I help you? But Jesus did not allow her to do anything except what we hear under the cross woman again not saying mother woman this is your son woman is because he wants to give that status of woman means she's going to be the mother of everyone the fifth aspect we see is how jesus dies on the cross and mary is dead heartbroken but she doesn't die she must have 
felt that her son is dying. You know, some people, parents see their children dying, so terrible. And Mary seeing Jesus dying, Mary seeing Joseph dying, Mary seeing many people dying, but Mary also seen how Jesus lifted people's hands and raised them up from death. And therefore she has that thought in herself. If this man died on the cross, the father who has chosen me amongst all women will raise him up on the last day. Therefore she waits to embrace him. And the sixth one is the piata, how Jesus is put in the arms of Mary. The body of Christ is there. She now knows two aspects, that is, the first aspect when she placed Jesus in the manger. Manger, we know, is a place where the cattle eats food. And therefore, she knows that this little child is going to be the bread for everyone, food, body of Christ. And now when she is holding on to Jesus, that body, that dead body, she knows that this is a memorial food and therefore she once again holds that body upon her lap. But look at the thought process in her, going to be the food for us. Finally, she lays Jesus in the sepulchre and she knows that this sepulchre is going to be new life. She knows that all the sorrows that she went, she also buried it there. That is very important for us, the last sorrow. But sometimes we have to bury our sorrows. And Mary buried all the sorrows when she buried her own son in the sepulchre, knowing that the new life is going to come because he said, and on the third day I will rise. Every sorrow that we have has a silver lining. Every sorrow that we go through will always be a great blessing if we endure it and learn from Mary how we can go through it for the glory of God. and sisters of the sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O merciful God, to the praise of your name, the present sacrificial offering which we bring to you 
as we venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you graciously gave to us as a mother devoted to us when she stood by the cross of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise and bless and glorify your name on the memory of Our Lady of Sorrows, for by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thumma, Bala, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by Jesus' divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Receive the body of Christ spiritually, celebrating this Eucharist in your system or online. Now let us say the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask, O Lord, that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mary suffered with her son, we may complete in ourselves for the church's sake what is lacking in the suffering of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, dear friends. Good morning, Wish you all a very happy feast of Our Lady of Sorrow. What is suffering now? The Mother Earth is suffering. The Mother Earth is suffering. So we will offer our Blessed Mother our earth, may we all live, this world in which we live is a mother, the land is our motherland. We ask our mother of sorrow to heal the world, to protect the world from this dreaded coronavirus and keep us safe and take us safe one day in that eternal home. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.